The rishis, the sages of ancient India, understood God in a manner utterly unlike most of the great prophets and saints of the West. The conventional Western view of God is an almighty and all-knowing, eternal, heavenly being who rules over his creation, a creation that's quite separate from its creator. But the rishis envision God as being non-separate from creation, that is, immediately present in every rock and plant, every planet and galaxy, and in the heart of every living being. For this reason, Hindus worship God not only in forms like Shiva, Vishnu, and Ganesha, but also in the form of the sun, in the form of sacred rivers, trees, and mountains, and as the consecrated deities established on temple altars. This uniquely Hindu concept of God is based on a theology that's profound and surprisingly complex. Because of its complexity, it often gets misunderstood. For example, many people wrongly believe that Hinduism is polytheistic, since Hindus worship many gods. But the most ancient and revered of all Hindu scriptures, the Rig Veda, says, Ekam sat vipra bahudha varanti. God is one, whom the wise call by many names. That one God is usually called Bhagavan or Ishvara. The many gods worshipped by Hindus are all aspects or forms of Ishvara. When teaching this to children, I ask them, How many mothers do you have? One, they all answer. And how do you address her? Mom, they say being raised in the U.S. Then I ask, when your father comes back from work, does he say, Hi, Mom, I'm home? No, they shout. One of them says, My dad calls her honey. And they all laugh. Then I ask, when a delivery man comes to the front door, does he say, Hello, honey, to your mom? In this amusing way, the children understand that one and the same person is called Mom, Honey, and Mrs. Patel or Mrs. Iyer, depending on the situation and her role as mother, wife, and so on. In the same way, one and the same Ishvara is called Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, in the roles of creator, sustainer, and destroyer. Western scholars describe this theology with obscure terms like henotheism and monolatry. But even those are not accurate because Hinduism's theology is more complex than one god with many names and forms. In particular, another ancient and revered scripture, the Samaveda, says, Sarvam Kalvidam Brahma. All this, all that exists, the entire universe with all its creatures, is Brahman. Brahman is the name for absolute reality, or formless God whereas gods like Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva have human-like features, Brahman has no features, no attributes, no qualities whatsoever. Brahman is the underlying reality because of which everything exists. Everything, including even Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Brahman is existence itself. As I said, 
Hindu theology is profound and surprisingly complex. Fortunately, a simple metaphor can be used to explain all of this, a metaphor based on dreams. At night, you create a dream world, a world with its own earth and sky, a world populated by people, plants, and animals. That world exists as long as you dream, and then, when you wake up, it ceases to exist. For your dream world, you are its creator, sustainer, and destroyer, like Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. But this metaphor goes far beyond the concept of one god with many names and forms. At night, when you dream, the dream world exists within you. There's no distance whatsoever between the dream world and its creator, you. In the same way, Hindu theology accepts no distance whatsoever between the world in which we live and its creator, Ishvara. The world exists within Ishvara and is non-separate from Ishvara. Perhaps the most striking feature of the dream metaphor is this. In your dreams, buildings are not made of wood and brick, nor are people made of flesh and bones. What are they all made of? Well, they're all creations of your mind, projections of your own consciousness. So, in a manner of speaking, the buildings, people, and everything else in your dreams are made of you. Based on this, we can say that you, your own consciousness, is manifest in the form of your dream world and all its creatures. In the same way, we can say that Ishvara is manifest in the form of the universe and all its creatures. In this way, Ishvara is present in every rock and tree, every planet and galaxy, and in all living beings. The dream metaphor we just discussed is not meant to show that the world is merely a dream or illusion. It's meant to show how the ancient rishis envision God to be both imminent and transcendent. Imminent means inherent, indwelling, immediately present. Just like you are immediately present everywhere in your dream world, Ishvara is immediately present throughout the universe. And just like you are manifest in the form of the buildings, people, and everything else in your dream world, Ishvara is manifest in all worldly forms, in everything that exists. For this reason, Ishvara pervades the universe not as some kind of formless, ethereal being, but as its underlying substratum, as the very fabric of existence. The ancient rishis envision God simultaneously as being transcendent, not only in the world, but beyond it as well. How can that be understood? Well, you are not only present throughout your dream world, but you are also beyond it, as the dreamer who is sleeping comfortably in bed. You, the dreamer, existed before the dream world was created, and you continue to exist after it disappears. In the same way, before the universe was created and after its dissolution, at the end of time, Ishra forever exists 
as a transcendent being. Because Ishvara transcends the world, it's completely incorrect to describe Hindu theology as being pantheistic, as some scholars do. Pantheism is a doctrine that says God exists in the form of the universe. Everything is a manifestation of God, and God is manifest as everything. But statements like these only describe the imminent nature of God, not God's transcendent nature. Whereas pantheism declares that God exists in the form of the universe, the rishis declare that Ishvara is far more than its manifestation in the form of the universe. Okay, that's enough introduction. We needed this overview of how the rishis envisioned God to understand their amazing poetry. Poetry in which they actually depict the face of God. The most famous example of this imagery is found in an ancient Vedic hymn called Purusha Suktam. Suktam means hymn, a poetic prayer, and Purusha means person. But the person depicted in this hymn is not an individual being like you or me, but rather it is Ishvara as a cosmic being, a cosmic person. Purusha is sometimes described as having the sun and moon for eyes, the vastness of space as his body, and the earth as his feet. As remarkable as that might sound, Purusha Suktam describes Ishvara in a far more grandiose manner. I'd like to share the hymn with you now, along with a versified translation that I composed. Prose translations of mystical poetry like Purusha Suktam fail to fully capture the Rishi's sense of awe and wonder in their contemplation of Ishvara's magnificence. I've tried my best to faithfully represent their glorious vision in simple English verses. I've also included some brief comments to help you better appreciate each verse. If you'd like to listen to the hymn without any interruptions, please see the video linked in the description below. Om Sahasra Shirsha Purusha Sahasra Chasahasra A thousand heads the Lord does have A thousand eyes, a thousand feet Sabhumim Vishwato Vritva Atyatishtadda Shangulam Completely he pervades the world, and yet beyond it he extends. The opening verses of this hymn depict both the imminent and transcendent nature of Ishvara. First, the face of God is described as having thousands of heads and eyes, with a body that has thousands of feet. The number 1,000 represents infinity. Infinite heads, eyes, and feet signifies all heads, all eyes, and all feet, including yours and mine. In this way, Ishra's imminent nature is described as being manifest in the form of all beings. This very same verse also declares Ishvara to be transcendent, not only pervading the world, but extending beyond it as well. 
पुरुष हे वेरगम सर्वम यदूत यम ओ विस इंडीड हिज बट लो ओ वैट वंस वज एंड वट विल बी उतमृतत्वस्ेशान यरनेति The Lord of immortality transcends this realm of earthly forms. All this is God, Ishvara. My guru liked to say that there is not one God; there is only God. Etavanasya mahima. अथो छायागश्चुषा सच इज द ग्रेटनेस ऑफ द लोड यथि सुपैसेस इवन दिस पारो हो स्य विश्व भूतानी त्रिपारस्यामृतं दिवि one part of him became the world while three more parts remained beyond ishvara is so much greater than the entire universe just like you are so much greater than your dream world your dreams come and go while you continue to exist in the same way entire cycles of creation come and go whereas ishvara exists forever tripad hu dvahu dait purushah paro ho sye ha bhavat punah transcendent is the boundless lord from part of him the world arose tato vishwan vyakramata sashana nashane abhi then he pervaded everything all creatures and all things in earth Ishvara pervades the universe not as a formless ethereal being but as the very fabric of existence even though Ishvara's imminent presence in the universe is infinitely vast Ishvara's transcendent aspect is far greater Kasmahad virara jayata Virajo hadi purushah the cosmos came forth from the lord who then presided over it sajato hatyaratyata paschad bhumi mato purah the lord's creation grew divers and his existence filled the world the next section of the hymn metaphorically represents the creation of the universe by means of a yagna a sacred fire ritual in such rituals many oblations are offered into a sacrificial fire and consumed by the flames the flames symbolically carry those offerings to ishvara who in turn blesses the worshipers in this hymn the gods in heaven are said to perform a fire ritual not for the sake of receiving blessings but to produce the entire universe instead of ordinary oblations they symbolically offer ishvara into the flames just as a sacred fire transforms ordinary oblations into blessings this sacred fire transforms ishvara into the entire cosmos 
First, the hymn describes the sacrificial ritual, specifying how the sacred fire and the offerings are to be prepared. Yat purushena havishaha deva yajnam tanvata the gods conceived a mental rite in which they offered up the Lord. Vasanto hasya sidajyam grishmahitma sharadhavihi spring, fall, and summer signify oblations and their fire's fuel. Saptasya sanparidhayaha trisaptasamidakritaha Envisioning three fires prepared with seven sticks of sacred wood. Deva yad yad Yantan Vanaha Abadnan Purusham Pashum The God symbolically performed a rite of offering the Lord. Kayagnam Barhishi Prakshana Purusham Jata Mag Krataha, anointing him the foremost Lord, thus they prepared their offering. Tena Deva Hayajanta Sadhya Rishayashchaye, then with the sages and the saints. The gods did sacrifice the Lord. Then, after Ishra is symbolically offered into the sacrificial fire, the sacred ritual, performed by the gods in heaven, produces the entire universe and everything in it. Tasmahad yajnat Sarvahutaha Sampratam Prashadajyam Arising from that sacred rite When everything had been consumed Pashugas Tagas Chakreva Yavyana Aranyan Gramyashchaye Came butter, curds, and animals Of sky and forest and the farm Tasmahat yajnat sarvahutaha Rachasamani jagnire Emerging from that sacrifice in which they offered up the Lord. Chandagam si jagni re tasmahata yajus tasmara jayata came Vedic mantra sacred hymns from Sama, Yajur, and the Re, Tasmada Shwaha Jayanta, Yeke Chodhayadataha, and from that sacrifice were born fine horses with two rows of teeth. Gavu Hajagnire Tasmahata Tasmahajata Hajavayaha Then cows and goats and lambs as well All sprung forth from that blessed rite After describing the symbolic ritual through which the universe was created, 
the next section of the hymn describes how the universe arose from the sacrifice of Purusha's cosmic body into the sacred fire. Yat Purusham Vyaraduhu Kati Dhavya Kalpayan How did the Lord create the world? How did the gods envision it? Mukanke Masya Kaubahu Kavuru Paravuchyete What came forth from the Lord's own mouth? What from his arms, his legs and feet? Brahmano hosya mukhamasit Bahura janyakritaha The Brahman priest came from his mouth And from his arms came mighty kings Urutarasya yadvaishyaha Adhyagam shudro hajayata The merchant sprang forth from his legs And from his feet the laborers Chandra ma manaso jataha Chaksho suryo hajayata The moon proceeded from his mind, and from his heart the sun arose. Mukhadindrash chagnishcha pranad vayurajayata The winds descended from his breath, his mouth emitted burning fire. Nabhyaha siddhantarikshan Shishno dyausamavartata Out from his navel space emerged And from his head the heavens rose Padhyam bhumirti shastrutrahata Tata lokagam akalpayan The earth was fashioned from his feet Thus all the worlds were manifest The first part of the hymn concludes with an ecstatic declaration by the rishi who composed it in which he describes his glorious vision of Purusha, the cosmic being. Vedaha metam purusham mahantam Aditya varnam tamasastu pare As such I saw the Lord Supreme like sunlight blazing through the dark. Sarvani rupani vichitya dhiraha Namani kritva vivaranayara stihi The wise discerned his countless forms which they invoked with many names. Dhata purastad yamuda jahara Shakra pravidwan pradishashchatasraha This wisdom did the Lord impart Unto all quarters long ago Tamevam vidwan amritahiha bhavati Nanya Pantha Ayanaya Vidyate One knowing him is freed from death 
No other path can reach this goal. Yajne na yajna maya janta devaha Tani dharmani pratamanyasana Thus through the God's great sacrifice The Lord created everything Te hanakam mahimana sachante Yatra purve sadhya santi devaha All those who gain this highest truth Attain the realms of gods and saints The shorter second part of the hymn lyrically restates much of what was said in the first part with wonderful poetry. The hymn ends with a beautiful, heartfelt prayer. Adhyasam bhuta vratavyarasahacha Vishwakarmana samavartatadhi From water, earth, and elements The world was fashioned by the Lord Tasyatvashta viradhat rupa meti Tat purushasya vishva majana magre Then he assumed the sun's own form Illumining the universe Vedaha metam purusham Mahantam Aditya Varnantam Safarastat As such I saw the Lord Supreme Like sunlight blazing through the dark Tamevam Vidwan Hamratahi Habhavati Nanyaf Panta Yate Yanaya, one knowing him is freed from death. No other path can reach this goal. Prajapatish Charati Garbhe Hantaha, Ajaya Mano Bahudhavi Jayate. The Lord abides in every heart, unborn yet giving birth to all. Tasya dhira parijananti yonim marichina paramichanti vedasaha. The sages know him as the source and gods aspire to reach their state. Yo Deve Bhyahatapati Yo Devanaham Purohitaha The Lord shines bright upon the gods Their master teaching everyone Purvo bhyo deve bhyo chataha namo ruchaya brahmaye existing first before them all all salutations to the Lord Rucham brahman janayantaha deva this sacred knowledge of the Lord The gods declared so long ago Yes, Tvayvam Braham Pano Vidyat Tasya Deva Asan 
The one who knows the Lord as such Excels those very gods and thee Hrishcha te lakshmishcha patnyahu Ahoratre arshwe The goddesses, Lord, are thy wives The day and night both are thy sons Nakshatrani rupam Ashwinavyatam The sparkling stars above thy form The earth and sky thy mouth so vast Ishtam manishana Amum manishana Please grant me all that I desire and help me reach life's highest goal. Sarvam Manishana Om Shanti 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 Fulfill the purpose of my life Bestow your peace upon us all.